impromptu show. Impromptu show. Good morning from Orlando Hamcation. Sort of. Well, the hotel, anyhow. <laughs> yeah, and now the bus is gone. Who are you? I'm Phil McElrath, K5 BBC, Palm Coast, Florida, unless I'm out west in the RV, which is Wyoming and Colorado. And uh, just happened to be parked next to me, and I was noticing the antennas on the top, so I was trying to give you the, uh, wow, what are those antennas for? But you recognized me, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you gave me a tour of the stuff inside yeah. your vehicle. Well, I got into DMR a while back. I had dual 2820s for my comment there for when I travel on the road. Pulling a travel trader, I always like to load up the route. We'll, uh, get, we'll get the vehicle in the background here. Yeah, with RT systems, and I just sort of dial along or scan along in the banks as I go, so I'm always listening to something to keep me entertained or keep me awake. And uh, went into DMR a while back, so I keep growing this antenna farm on top of it. Um, we've got Alcom Telco. Middle one is a VHF for DMR. The back one's a, that's actually a PC Tel uh, half wave UHF I use on DMR. And then the two either side are Comtelco uh, dual bands, which uh, I kept the, uh, the dual 2820s in there when I went to DMR because a man can't have too many radios. True. And uh, I don't know if you wanted to shoot where we just stuck them on the floor down there. Yeah. We don't do mag mounts. We don't do two-sided tape. We don't do Velcro. Everything's in holes up here. We stick screws in the floor. Okay, so we can't talk because the microphone's going away. Well, I can talk because I'm still close to them. So everything is clean, the wiring. You, you did the same kind of hose, except all of your wires are still inside the hose and everything, not slopping back out. Everything is in conduit, and we don't have lumps and bumps under the carpet because I drill a hole under the passenger seat and the driver's seat, and the conduits come to the back of the truck. We drill more holes in the back of the cab, and they come in, and everything is sealed up. And the RF decks are mounted down the back wall of the cab, which we can go around to the other side, and I can show you that if you'd like to see it. Yeah, let's take a look. And uh, try and keep it all neat. and. Out of the way of my friend's kids and my do friend's dogs and whatever else I shove back there. So you put me to shame, actually, although uh, I, I, nice I, think, farm. I think I'm more, you know, it's it, it's more impressive, perhaps. Your but rack it is, is uh, yeah, can I got to that to another guy, you got a nice I was, rack. I was just thinking that might be a little dicey. Let's see here. Let's pull out all of it. Well, at least, at least you're as messy a traveler as I am. Oh, yeah. I'll get out of the way so you can get back there and shoot your film. All right. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, this is, yeah, I'm second rate. <laughs> <laughs> this is very nice. Although, yeah, you have a, a maybe a little more space to work with, you know, better in this palette, In so this vehicle, speak. yes. It's, it really it worked out great that the seats can be folded down and there's room to put more stuff. Uh, you do have to pull back the sound barrier and be sure where you're drilling holes because there's a a motor back there for the sliding window uh, and some other wiring that you don't want to tap through. So I always pull that back, make a look, uh, poke through with an ice pick or something to be sure that uh, where I want to put the screw, where I want to put the radio is not going to cause other problems. Okay. So, you drive, where do you drive this from? Uh, on this particular trip, I was coming back from a trip out west, so I left uh, Denver, Colorado Tuesday morning and was here Wednesday night, which I don't normally do. Um, and okay. been but you do, tend to do a lot of cross country. All, all the time, yeah. yeah. I've been now, retired 10 years. Never considered HF or are you a code free tech? I, no, I do HF <laughs> uh, and I'm a code free extra. <laughs> do HF but primarily in my travel trader or with the house up here in Florida when I'm there. Uh, if I do HF sometime and I saw this beautiful ICOM 7300 yesterday, so I'm thinking maybe the 7000 does move into this and the 7300 goes into the travel trader. Uh, I'll probably do the whip back here on your old CHP type mount with yeah. a tuner type thing. Oh, I, I recommend Fill a big uh, hole here. Yeah, I recommend the Tar Heels or anybody's good screwdriver. I've got a Tar Heel I use on the Travel Trader, and I'm going to pick up uh, one of the Radio Waves uh, omnidirectional loop jobs because I okay. can put that up very easily on the Travel Trader, put it up, take it down, fold it away. So, so I can be on the road wherever I want to be and uh, and have radio when. Uh, Whenever I want to have radio. <laughs> yep. Although HF gives it to you literally everywhere. everywhere yeah. yeah. Especially out, out west. Uh, and they use six meter a lot out there as well uh, for local chatter because it travels so well in the mountain states. So I'll look into getting that as well. Yeah. Well, you're, uh, no, 2820s. I'm thinking my 8900's got six meters, but you got 2820s. No, the 2820s, so, yeah. those are the uh, ICOM uh, yeah. dual band D-Star. Yeah. Star analog. Yeah, I got one of those in there. Good radio. I like it. I like it. That's what I say. When I put the DMR in, I was going to remove one. I thought, no, I'll leave it in there because, uh, again, I do this rolling program when I go down the road across the states. Yep. And now, you're involved in the uh, MCOM 1 vehicle, which I haven't covered at this mm -hmm. ham fest yet. But we're yes. going to try to do a Skype talk. 
with David because I've, I've done stuff on MCOM vehicles. I'm always interested in them and everybody's interested in if them. If you can so. get at least get a camera shot of it today because it's in a really great configuration right now as an interoperability vehicle, uh, not as a, a rolling command post, but uh, as a, a rolling com um, communications vehicle. It's got everything in it right now from HF to satellite communications. Uh, bridging networks where you can bridge uh, any number of public safety systems. Oh, you've got it on the back of that, yes. Yeah, they put it on. This is the uh, um, the program for the Hamcation. I've been here and four they, days and haven't seen that yet. <laughs> and they stuck it on the back. And those are frequencies for the high terror repeater it's, that they set up at, at the Hamfest. So. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, I'll try to get, uh, get by and get more than this picture. Yes, yeah, it's, it's primarily aimed at public safety right now. Uh, that sort of situation where like they had the wildfires, uh, your wildfire People roll up with VHF, P25, or PHF analog. Uh, what did I just say? More coffee. VHF. <laughs> what is PHF? But, analog? Well, they all can't talk to each other. And they can't. Uh, and Mike's I mean, got the band set up where he can interoperability. He can make them all the, talk to each other, yeah. regardless of what they're on. With the radio, they're used to working with, so they they've got their familiar equipment. It doesn't matter whether they're VHF, P25, EDAX. Uh, we can cross tie our own Harris EDAX out of our county into it. They, they awesome tell me system. that, that um, the, the, a typical life cycle of a public safety radio is about 10 years. Yeah, but 10 years, they're going to retire them because even though the hams think they're still great, they're, yeah. they're not something you want to trust a fireman's life to. Well, the guy so, has Ecom 1. He's, he's the radio manager in our county, and uh, we've got Shoreline. You should see some of the handhelds that come in that work the beach <laughs> area. Yeah. Um, but at 10 years is probably you know a rough ballpark. Yeah, our and system is running on its uh, about 13th year now, and we're in the, in the, uh, yeah. the process of bidding out the something new. Interoperability became a buzzword in, um, in 2011. Uh, no, before that, 2001, Yeah. Uh, with the, the uh, World Trade Towers. That's more than a 10-year cycle for yeah. interoperability to be built into radios. It's not. We need to build interoperability into people as well because <laughs> well, yeah. all the equipment in the world's useless if, if we don't train the people how to use it and don't have people out in the field who can yeah. do these these bridging at, uh, at events and things like that. So, But, I mean, hams have had multi-band handhelds, multi-band, multi-mode handhelds for a long time. Years? Public safety is resisting that. Uh, is it too much to ask to put that stuff into a handheld? They're warming up to it. In fact, we were using uh, yesterday to keep track of ourselves around everywhere, uh, Apex 8000s, I believe, that were VHF, uh, UHF-2, and 700-800 P25. Okay, so it's coming. They're there. Harris has a very nice one they finally came out with. Uh, I guess pricey. I guess what my, the bottom line, and we'll, we'll del delve into this in, in more depth in a Skype interview, is why do we need an MCOM-1? Why isn't it already built in? Um, well, MCOM-1 is out showing them that it exists and can be built. <laughs> right. And, it's, but, and it but gets do a it, lot but, of interest at, yeah. at shows like that. But, but why do we need it? Why isn't it, why isn't it already in the radios? I mean, maybe that's impractical. I, I'm asking this as a, you know, a journalist question, not an antagonist question. Give, uh, give Apple another 18 months with the iPhone. We'll see what, <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll have the iRadio. That's a good Which enough. actually we do. A fellow showed us the other day uh, one that, that had, I forgot what band it was, but the, the entire front of the phone was screen. Oh, yes, it's the, uh, the DMR, DMR Android phone yeah. that our finder has got. So with technology, uh, that kind of stuff coming up as fast as it is, I'm sure, yeah. uh, and with companies like Harris, like I say, they just came out with a multi-band public service radio. I think we're going to see it sooner than later. Okay, um, let's go into this in Skype. Okay. Later, and we can talk in depth. I'll get, and I'll get, get Mike to talk to you today. Come on by the van when you get a chance. I will do it. And, uh, and we'll... Well, actually, we'll be around probably till noon with it. So. Okay, thanks okay. for the impromptu you show. Have you a ball. Can say over and out. Over and out. More coffee. Bad, bad radio procedure, right? Oh, um, over and out. Radio procedure. Over and out. Over bad is and out. Over means. You I always talk. used to say, uh, contact the center next frequency dandy day. So, there you go. <laughs> Everybody have fun.